let us start lecture 36 and uh, the course is corrosion failures and analysis. We have been talking about uh, cavitation damage, we just started and in fact, we give an example that if you have a, a container and if you have a piston, if we increase the pressure, uh, if we start with the water vapor, it will start forming liquid and if we uh, decrease the pressure, if we, start, uh, we, we decrease the pressure over liquid uh, by pulling the piston out, uh, then of course, the liquid will start evaporating. Now, that happens uh, at a constant temperature and that can be obtained by putting entire thing in a constant temperature bath uh, and then you can do that isothermal operation. Okay. So, this is isothermal operation by, uh, by the piston uh, and that piston increasing pressure actually takes the uh, vapor uh, from vapor zone to the uh, liquid zone over that equilibrium point between liquid and vapor and that equilibrium point is actually uh, uh, following a, a, a curved uh, uh, curved data uh, between pressure curve line uh, which is the which is the line drawn between pressure and temperature so let us talk about cavitation uh, uh, corrosion so uh, the course is corrosion failures analysis and lecture 36 so, we talk about erosion corrosion and in, in fact here it will be a special category of erosion corrosion that is cavitation damage, cavitation. Now, uh, if we uh, recall our discussion this is the water phase diagram. So, water phase diagram happens like this. So, this is solid this is liquid, this is vapor. Okay. So, now let us say if it is one atmosphere, so then this temperature is 0 degree Celsius, this temperature is 100 degree Celsius. Now, uh, at other temperature other than 100 degree Celsius also we can have a boiling. Okay. So, this point is the boiling point, this is melting point. So, in fact, uh, 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 that melting point can also be considered freezing point. So, now boiling point, now over this entire line, over this entire line, every point is a boiling point. Okay. So, that means at a particular, uh, this point let us say considered, if we draw a, a parallel line to the, with respect to pressure line. Okay. So, then at this pressure, for this particular temperature let us say T prime, it will be liquid at this pressure at the same temperature T prime it will be vapor. So, that means here uh, the transition takes place from vapor to liquid or liquid to vapor. So, we are bothered about this particular transition. Okay. So, we are, we are actually considering this transition and that leads to cavitation and we have given an example that uh, uh, this particular example we have talked about it is a basically a piston and it is kept at a, at a, in a constant temperature by T prime and if pressure reduces uh, if over a liquid, over a liquid this vapor forms and then again pressure increases this vapor will collapse. Now, this, so this vapor actually forms in the form of bubbles and in fact, if you increase the pressure vapor, uh, bubble will collapse. The bubble collapse takes place like this. So, if this bubble is forming over the surface, then uh, this particular surface it will it will prevent that bubble to spread. Okay. So, now because of the increase in pressure it will break like this, break like this. Now, when this breaking happens water is following that particular break points those hinge points and then finally, it is forming a water jet. Okay. So, this water jet when the bubble entirely collapses, this water jet falls on top of the metal and then it actually tries to give a huge pressure which is of the order of around 50 mega 500 mega Pascal which can deform the surface and or 
we talked about deformation of the surface in the previous lecture, but if let us say the surface is covered with a passivating layer or oxide layer that because of that particular high pressure that at that point of heating of that jet over that particular metal surface that passive layer can break open. Okay. So, then it will expose the fresh material and if it is not having any passive layer then the base metal can deform. So, deformation can lead to extra corrosion okay, and then again on one bubble forms because of this decrease in pressure and the next process increase in pressure bubble collapse like that or that process go on. Now, we talked about deformation part. Now, if we let us say this is a passive layer that has formed. Now, the bubble has formed. Now, that bubble is collapsing, water jet is actually following that collapse point. Now, it hits here and because of hitting uh, let us say a small portion of that particular particular section is exposed fine. So, that means, this is the part which is exposed to the electrolyte. So, now if it is a passivating one in that particular electrolyte, the next passivation layer would form, this passive layer would form fine. So, now a uh, little bit of passive layer, uh, the little bit of material would be lost in the form of that lost uh, rust and the next rust will form or the next passive layer would form. The next cycle again another, so now you have a situation like this, So, this is the thing and now uh, uh, the next bubble, the possibility of formation of bubble due to reduced reduction in pressure would be maximum, would be very not maximum, I would not, I should not say that particular part that maximum, there will be possibility would be very high at this point. Okay. Why? Because this provides nucleating site. the scratch surface. So, that is what uh, for example, so this scratch surface if it forms again, again that bubble will collapse, water jet will hit this surface. The next process would be this particular segment would further damage and that damage will be also extending sideways little bit. So, this surface would be like this and the rust layer would be again. So, this particular section goes up, so this particular section goes off the rust will go off and then uh, here also a part will again repassive it, this will again repassive it. Okay. So, that is what it is indicated here, again repassivation like that the material loss is taking place. This is in case of passivating metal. Passivating metal and alloy, but if it is not passivating of course, uh, the passive layer is not breaking, but it will be it will be deforming because of this effect this water jet that is impinging on this particular surface, this surface would be deformed, this is the deformed part. So, now this is active site and that would lead to a corrosion, okay. higher corrosion, higher degree of corrosion higher corrosion. So, then this part will 
corrode to, to some extent and the next bubble forms and then again that bubble collapse happens. So, like that way those uh, cycle will move on. Uh, the cycle is like this, low pressure bubble form, why bubble forms? Okay, so, let me uh, draw it here, what is the cycle? First is low pressure, then boiling happens, boiling leading to bubble formation. Now, if it goes to high pressure, so then there the operation would be bubble will collapse, because vapor will convert to water. So, this bubble collapse will lead to impingement, impingement and that impingement will lead to deformation. So, the deformation would lead to corrosion and then again next bubble forms and like that way the entire cycle when it happens the damage happens and through the deformation mode that time we call it cavitation. So, this is in case of uh, non passivating metal and uh, if it is a passivating metal then here when the impingement happens the deformation instead of deformation here passive layer breaks. Okay. Then passive layer when passive layer breaks and that time corrosion happens and corrosion leads to formation of passive layer, passive layer and then passive layer again low pressure happens boiling bubble formation like that with this circle cycle will move. So, this is basically a typical a cycle of cavitation. Now, interesting part is we have been talking about low pressure and high pressure fine. Now, question is we are doing an experiment in the lab where we are decreasing the pressure by pulling the piston out over a liquid or increasing the pressure by pushing the piston in into the liquid. So, this laboratory experiment is fine, but now thing is whether this can be achieved in a in a component or a moving component fine. Now, in case of static component until unless the atmospheric pressure drops we do not experience such experience such kind of thing, okay. but if it is a moving object then of course, pressure drops. Okay. For example, I am just giving you one typical example let us say this hand if you just wave through for example, I am waving through this hand you will see that this back of the hand you will always experience a little bit little, little cool air coolness here. Okay. You could feel that the back of the hand is actually getting little bit of air flow from outside. Okay. So, this movement, okay. so this movement what if happens there when we move like this quickly if you move you will feel more uh, cooler air coming on the back side. Okay. So, this happens because we are actually pushing the air like this, this waving hand and because of the push the front side of that particular push will have high pressure, the back side is actually having low pressure and because it is creating low pressure the back side when you when you move like this the air from surrounding atmosphere is actually trying to fill that particular uh, uh, low pressure zone and that is what you are feeling a little bit of coolness there. Okay. Fine. So, this is this is ha this happens whenever a something some object moves very fast okay. the back end of that object will always create a kind of low pressure zone. For example, a car okay, or a bus if it moves at a high rate okay, so that time the low pressure would be created and that actually allow, allows those 
uh, uh, air 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 molecules to come from outside to the back end. For example, if it is a car, if it is a car and this is the this is the front end, this is the front end. Okay. So, now if it is moving at a high speed, they, there it will be low pressure and here it will be high pressure and this dynamics is very complicated, uh, but at least this is very very true. Fine. Now, that means any object if, if so, uh, this particular if it, if it is going through the air. Now, if something moves in a fluid or liquid at a high speed and if it is dragging the liquid you would also see that the back end is actually having low pressure. For example, uh, you just do for example, a small experiment uh, take a uh, uh, take a bucket full of bucket a long bucket okay, and then try to pull your hand through that particular water you will see that the, uh, uh, the back end will have a, will create a kind of vortex and there water will start coming from surrounding. So, this is also a kind of low pressure zone created at the back end fine. So, this low pressure creation is possible whenever there is a moving object in a fluid or in a liquid. So, there the pressure can drop and then boiling can happen. Okay. So, there we have cavitation and where we can have those kind of situation like impeller, impeller, propeller. So, those kind of situations we always experience low pressure at the back of the blade of the impeller, impeller or back of the blade of the propeller. Okay. So, there water can boil. Even the temperature is less than 100 degree Celsius water can boil because it is basically the phase diagram that is playing a role. If it is this is the pressure temperature phase diagram of water and now this is my one atmosphere pressure the boiling point is 100 degree and if the pressure drops to let us say uh, very low uh, if I try to look at this particular diagram let us say pressure goes to as low as around 0.5 or 0.4 atmosphere. So, then it can boil at a much lower temperature fine. So, uh, uh, but that thing actually exactly takes place even at a room temperature water can boil. Now, that boiling would lead to a, an, in a liquid water if boiling happens that would lead to a small bubble. Okay. So, that bubble does not contain air it contains steam and that bubble can burst if in that system somehow it goes into a high pressure zone. Okay. So, then that bubble can collapse. For example, let us look at the centrifugal pump and impeller uh, blade situation. Let us go to that. Here also since this drawing is complicated for teaching purpose I have taken it from this particular site. You can go and look at this site. Okay. This is for education purpose. Now, uh, what happens this is a simple pump a centrifugal pump okay. and in that centrifugal pump these is basically the inside that casing we have those impeller blades. So, these are the blades. Okay. So, this is a blade. So, this is impeller blades that blue color. So, these are the blades fine. So, now these are the blades here these are the blades. Now, it has mainly three components there are different components I am not bothered about those components I am looking at those components which actually develops those bubble, bubbles. Now, this is I of I of impeller. So, this particular part where and this is the part. Okay. So, this is the eye impeller eye. Now, this is the suction zone through which the water is sucked in. Now, how come water can be sucked in? Okay. The only possibility is if there is a low pressure. The low pressure will take the water inside that through that eye into the impeller on onto the impeller rather okay, inside the casing. Now, this impeller is moving at a high speed. The impeller movement is this way. Okay because of this impeller movement the suction is created and the water is taken into the chamber and that chamber this impeller blade when it goes to this okay, around this section this water is thrown to the uh, outside uh, through this outlet. Okay. So, this outlet is called discharge. Okay. So, now question is 
until unless the pressure is dropped in the eye region suction cannot happen and then it has to thrown into the atmosphere. So, that means this is you can say atmospheric pressure. In fact, this pressure goes beyond atmospheric pressure. Okay. So, then when it goes outside then the pressure becomes uh, atmospheric pressure. So, now in the suction zone pressure start reducing away from the suction zone it will be one atmosphere the water is at normal pressure. Now, as you are suctioning then the pressure is dropping in the eye region the pressure would be minimum and then as the water goes to the discharge region the pressure would again start increasing. Now, this is the decrease in pressure and then increase in pressure that leads to a situation of bub bubble formation or boiling situation as well as uh, uh, conversion of steam into liquid again. So, let us look at how it happens. Now, here in case of impeller, so that means if we see clearly that uh, we have our design like this, fine, this is a simple uh, design. So, now this impeller blades are designed like this. Okay. So, now uh, it is moving this way. So, the water is taken out, this is discharge, this is I and let us say this is a suction zone, suction zone. Now, if we try to look at the pressure variation from suction zone to discharge of that water, we can have a plot like this. So, let us say this point is suction. So, I am talking about this zone, this is a suction zone. Okay. So, now and this is the I zone, this is the I, this is the discharge. So, that is what we are looking at. Now, suction zone it is coming the start of the suction zone you can see it is one atmosphere. Now, the pressure will drop, pressure drop is taking place, let us say it is not linear. So, like this and then it goes to I. Okay. Now, after it crosses I, the water pressure would again increase. So, this is the kind of uh, variation of pressure of that water uh, from suction to the discharge zone. Now, if we try to look at the temperature at which that pump is operating, now that would also have let us say this is the temperature T prime. So, that time this is the pressure T prime for the boiling to happen. If that particular point is lying here, lying here this is let us say P T prime. Now, all the pressure from suction to I to discharge is basically beyond the pressure required for boiling at T prime temperature and this pump is impeller is or pump is of P T prime okay, or sorry at T prime this is the temperature of water. Okay. So, that means this is that particular pressure point where, where, where boiling starts. Now, actual pressure in the lowest pressure region which is the I pressure is at this point fine and rest of the pressure starting from suction to the discharge will be all at a higher level. So, everything will be liquid no problem okay, no vapor formation or no steam boiling. So, there will be no question of forming bubbles. Now, if the pressure this particular pressure line is here. So, let us say this is instead of P T prime instead of here if it falls here okay, then what happens? You see at this point when the water moves from suction to I the pressure drops below the boiling point at T prime. Okay. So, now uh, instead of T prime let me put T double prime, so, let me draw a separate graph for that. So, now 
uh, this was the T prime. So, now this T prime let us say a little uh, higher temperature, the pump, pump is operating at a little higher temperature fine. So, this is P T double prime. So, this is P double prime it are little higher and this was at T prime the pump is taken the pump is operating at a uh, with the water which is having T double prime temperature and T double prime is greater than T prime. So, that means that pressure line the pressure for boiling would be lying here and if we draw a parallel line with the distance that will give you the pressure line wherever that pressure line is crossed by the pressure of water there will be boiling happening. So, now here boiling start and here vapor to liquid conversion will take place. Okay. So, now when bubble forms no problem bubble will stay, but when this bubble comes here when the water goes away from the I zone towards discharge zone at this point the vapor converts to liquid because the pressure line is crossing this point. So, it is initially it was here at this A location and let us say this is B location this is A location and now when it reaches to this. So, just a minute. So, let us say little down this. So, let us say this is the A point. So, the A point pressure was here this is A. Now, B point let us put this B point little above. So, here let us say. So, the B point is here. Okay. So, this is the B point fine. Now, see the difference when it is A point it is all vapor that means those and the liquid cannot convert vapor uh, all on a sudden. So, it will convert gradually. Okay. So, now that vapor is forming in the form of bubble and then when it crosses this point when the water moves from I to the discharge the vapor is or the those vapor is converting to liquid. So, that means the bubble has to collapse okay. and that bubble collapse leads to a water jet falling impinging on top of a metal surface fine. So, now when it reaches to the discharge location those bubble will collapse and those bubbles are forming on top of impeller blade and then bubbles are collapsing on top of impeller blade. And now the bubble formation will be more if the impeller is moving this way the bubble formation would be more on the back of the impeller okay. and this back of the impeller will have a serious cavitation damage and the damage mechanism is same impingement by a water jet due to bubble collapse and then either passive layer formation of the breaking of passive layer and then repassivation or it can deform the surface and then corrosion would happen. So, like that way the cycle what I have shown so that cycle will operate. So, this is the cycle uh, uh, that would operate there, but actually this is the situation what happens in case of pump the pressure line which corresponds to the boiling at that temperature of water that pressure line is crossed from suction to the eye and that crossing led to vapor formation and when the water is moved away from eye to the discharge at one location that pressure line P double prime will be crossed due to high pressure and those bubbles will collapse due because it has to collapse because collapse because the vapor has to convert to liquid. So, that thing happens continuously because this particular tank this particular pump will keep on operating and keep on sucking water through the eye and leaving it to the discharge. So, that way this cavitation damage happens in a moving object wherever a fluid is taken with the particular moving object. So, this is the situation in case of impeller or normal household centrifugal pump. Okay. So, this is one such instance where uh, cavitation damage happens over the impeller. In fact, this impeller blades can be broken into pieces small small pieces will happen. And another interesting part which I missed that when the bubble collapse 
it actually leads to a shock wave. Okay. So, that shock wave would also lead to a damage to the material and this bubble collapse can also lead to a sound. Okay. Now, more the bubble higher would be the sound and interestingly as the impeller bed is getting uh, corroded due to cavitation damage or getting damaged due to cavitation erosion whatever you say because of that the more number of bubble will start forming because it is actually making impression on that impeller blade. Initially it started with a very fresh shiny blade, but gradually it will become uh, uh, become a dented blades and their bubble will form and it will create a lot of sound. In, interestingly the pump starts creating sound and that time we have to be careful that there is something, something wrong is taking place in that particular pump and mostly in most of the cases it is basically the cavitation damage related phenomena as the time passes with the particular operation of the of operation of that particular pump. So, this is in, uh, in, in, in short that what is uh, cavitation damage and how it happens in case of moving objects in fluid or liquid. Propeller also the same thing happens, the, in case of propeller uh, uh, you have a blade like this, this is a spindle. So, this this is these are the blades and these are moving the back arm let us say this is the back of that. So, this portion will have lot of cavitation damage and this propeller is basically taking uh, a ship through the uh, through the water is not it. So, that because of this excessive beating excessive cavitation damage uh, the drag force the other the, 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 uh, the drag by which the steam is actually pushed forward will also reduce. Okay. So, these cavitation damage is a serious problem uh, to the pump impellers blades as well as propeller blades. So, let me stop here, we will continue our discussion on uh, cavitation and then we will start another special mode which is fretting mode uh, and then we will conclude erosion corrosion and then we will start another interesting topic which is called stress corrosion cracking. So, till then uh, let me stop here, thank you.